thirdly, the proclaiming of the gospel is another thing. Proclaiming of the gospel. Again, Matthew 11, verse 5. When, John's, John, when John the Baptist's disciples came and asking whether he's the one or should they wait for another, the reply of Jesus, let me read to you again. This is very important. Jesus replied saying, go and tell John what you hear and see. He says, you're seeing the healing miracles happening. Go and tell him what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, lame walk, lepers are cleansed. Listen to this. And the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. See, the gospel not only has healing and miracles and so on, the gospel also has the good news for the poor. A lot of people don't like to hear that. If your gospel does not have the good news to the poor, if it is not a gospel to the poor, then it's a poor gospel, my friend. Nobody needs that gospel. One of the greatest features of the gospel is that there is something in it for the poor. You think God is turning a blind eye to the poor? God doesn't care for the poor? Where have you been, my friend? In what world are you living? Have you read the Bible? The Bible says the gospel of the kingdom is preached. And when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, these miracles, signs, and all of those things accompany it. And along with it, one thing certainly, surely accompanies it. And that is the preaching of the gospel to the poor, the good news to the poor, that from the dust heaps of your life, God will raise you up and make you sit with the kings. God will raise the humble, the unworthy, the one that live by the roadside, the one that does, do not have anything, the one that are, ones that are destitute, ones that don't even have enough money to eat one meal a day. God cares about them. The poor, the gospel to the poor. The gospel to the poor is not, I will give some rice and wheat and milk and so on. The gospel to the poor means that when Jesus, the king of the kingdom of God becomes your king, that king will supply all your needs. That's the gospel, my friend. Read the gospel right. What kind of gospel did Jesus preach? Listen to the gospel he preached. Do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink and what you'll be clothed with. Look at the lilies of the field. Look at the birds of the air. <laughs> your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Only the people that don't know God go seeking after these things. But you, you who have Jesus as your king, you who are citizens of the kingdom of God, you're living in this world as a citizen of some place, but you're really a citizen of the kingdom of God if you put your faith in Christ and invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You are a citizen of the kingdom and your needs are met by a kingdom that is superior to any other kingdom, a kingdom where there is no lack or no want. From that kingdom is supplied all your needs. Every need is supplied from your kingdom. <laughs> Have you been to a poor country and a very poor country, and you see only huts and, uh, and, 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 and mud and slush and dirt, and all of a sudden you see a beautiful, uh, big bungalow of some kind, and you wonder who this is, and you find out that that's an ambassador from a country which is very rich. Well, when all the people are living in poverty, why is he living like this? Well, his needs are not met by that poor country. His needs are met by the country from where he comes, of which he is a citizen of. And that is the kingdom of God. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. The gospel is preached to the poor. A lot of people are against this. They say, oh, that's the prosperity gospel. What, what do you want to preach? Poverty gospel? I think instead of pre preaching poverty gospel, you don't have to preach the gospel at all. There is only one gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of God. And it has gospel good news for the poor. How dare some people say, oh, this is wrong doctrine. Well, which Bible are you reading, my friend? What is the will of God? 
I even people say, well, you must have only two sets of clothing, one on your body, one must be hanging on the clothesline. More than two is a sin. This is how we have taken Christianity to a crazy uh, extreme. We have made poverty as a qualification for going to heaven and salvation. <laughs> even Jesus dying is not enough. You must become poor, then only you'll go to heaven. And we have verses for that. <laughs> Because we can always shoot one or two verses. These people only have difficulty systematically teaching. You read the first two chapters of Genesis where God made everything. You show me poverty there. No poverty. You read the last two chapters of Revelation, which is the last two chapters of the Bible, and you read about the end and the new Jerusalem, new heaven uh, and new earth there. You show me poverty there. Only in the middle there is poverty. In the middle there is sin. There is this world. There is this evil. There is the devil, the darkness of the devil ruling the world. That is why poverty is there. Poverty does not belong to the world that God made it. And God, when he establishes his kingdom, one of the things that he does is get rid of the poverty. That is why wherever the Christian gospel is preached, they try to get rid of the poverty. It's very important. It has no place in man's life. It has no place in families. It has no place in our minds. Praise God. I hope you rejoice in 